Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey there folks, welcome you all to yet another Friday vlog of mine. It is the second one of the year of the decade, people. Another Friday has caught up with us. Flagons up to you all. This beard is, uh, oh, it's coming on people, isn't it? <laughs> every day's a battle with this thing, I tell you. I'm this close to shaving it every day, but I think it's coming on quite well. My little tiger stripes are doing quite well. As I expected, there's not much down the sides, but it's working. It's working quite well. I'm, quite, I'm, I'm actually, I've grown, actually grown attached to it now. So whenever I get that feeling of like, shave it off, it's like, yeah, you'll not like yourself when you've done it. Because I remember even, I, this is the first time I've got this far trying to grow a beard. The last time I tried, I think I got to about two weeks and then it failed off. I think this is this is three and a bit weeks now, I think, because I, I stopped shaving the minute I stopped working for Christmas. So, yeah, I think it's about three, just over three weeks. So we're not doing too badly because I knew I wasn't going to get much in these on these side bits. So it was just a matter of how it would look. But I'm pretty chuffed with it. And as I say, I've grown really attached to it now. I, I stroke it regularly, people and the beard. <laughs> You're welcome. Anyway, flagons up to you all. If you haven't got one of these, then go and get one. Unless it's, you know, Sunday morning, then don't do that. But if you're watching it this very evening or of any evening, get yourself one of these or something similar to it and, and, and say cheers to me. Flagons up to you all. I'll have a couple of sips and we'll get going. We do have gaming content to talk about. I will have a couple of sips if I can stop talking, people. Mmm. Blimey, people. Oh, it's very cold and it's very nice. Oh, it's been a good working week. I've got loads done this week, actually. I've got, uh, I'm launching a, a new product at work next week, early next week that I've written. So it's just fine tuning it, making sure all the little bits are working properly. And so I've, I've um, everything's bang on and we're, and we're good to go next week. So it's been a, a good week in that respect. And I have managed to get some, some gaming in people. So I'm going to crack straight into the gaming talk and... Now let's talk about what I've been up to first. The video in in, in, in in itself is more about some new news we're getting through about Xbox One X, some new news, we're, sorry, Xbox Series X. It's going to get hard to get used to that, isn't it? Xbox Series X and PS5. So we'll have a little chat. We'll have more of a chat. That'll be the majority of the video. But let's talk about the little bits of gaming that I have done. I won't go on about Jedi Fallen Order too much because I've talked about it in the previous videos sort of on and on and on. All through Christmas, Steve. You've got nothing else to talk about other than, <laughs> other than bloody Jedi Fallen Order, man. <laughs> but I saw it through people and I finished it. I did. And I don't want to be any... I don't want to throw any spoilerific things at you. But... Oh, that game. Every time I felt like it was waning a little bit uh, in areas, it gave me it gave me something else. I was like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to, you know. And it did that all the way up to the last couple of levels. The only disappointment was there's no New Game Plus that I can find or anything that sort of takes full advantage of all the, the really cool bits that I then ended up with at the end. When you come to the end of the game, credits roll, you go back to the menu and you get a continue button, which basically gets you back to the section of the game before the big finale you can't redo the big finale but you can go and search all of the areas and get all of the bits that you hadn't found i've done a pretty good job of searching those areas but there's still there's still a bits i haven't got because the the little robot you've, you've there's a trophy to upgrade him fully and i haven't i haven't upgraded i've, I've got 95 percent, so i've missed one of his upgrades and there's little bits like that but i got a lot of stuff i did i was pretty thorough in my searching and i revisited areas as well but that game just kept on giving all the way through you can see that there's places they could have put more discoverable content in some more interest inside those areas a little bit but it was a beautiful game a little bit buggy but beautiful i mean i say that i didn't actually find anything that broke me gameplay i mean i only saw like a couple of times and literally just a couple of times on the x where i got a little bit of a freeze moving into a cutscene and out um I, I, i'm trying to think because there were there was a, there might have been a few things at the beginning that i found bugged out a little bit where it got a little bit sticky in, in sections when i was moving around but it, it wasn't a lot the x was actually and it is known that the x is the best place to play it but anyway, it was a gorgeous game. It was brilliant. Loved the story. The action was good. The They didn't just throw battle after battle after battle at you. It was very much a balance of battle and puzzle and exploration, which I loved. It really threw, you know, 
climbing around and uh, I mean it was just a, such a nice mesh of so many different games type game types and those fights were tough I mean I a couple of the boss fights uh, the, the lightsaber fights were tough like I mean I you know I mean I did them within the two worst ones I did within four attempts I think and that was on normal like so if I'd stuck that on Jedi Master or whatever it is I've no idea how much more difficult it is but uh, I mean, I guess I, I would prefer if to do like Jedi Master or New Game Plus, maybe, if there is a trophy for it. I don't know what the trophies are, but, you know, but it was just it was an absolute joy. And I got it. I got through to the end right at the end. And I'm not going to be I'm going to give you any spoilers, but right at the end, after you have the big major boss fight at the end, there's this huge moment where a character appears. And it was just like, oh, it was so epic. It was just brilliant absolutely brilliant loved every second of it and if i'm scoring it i'm giving it a nine out of ten and that point that they haven't got is because of it just needs a bit more to get your teeth stuck into in those areas you know discoverable wise a bit more in depth in the the kit that you pick up the lightsaber stuff was great it was more the 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 stuff you wear um, but you know, fantastic. Uh, you know, I think if they do a second one, they'll have more time. They won't have that deadline of the Star Wars movie coming out. They'll have more time to focus on on a second one and make it a bit more filled, a bit more polished. You know, all that sort of stuff. Absolutely adored that game, and I will go and play it again at some point, but not anytime soon. But I will absolutely play that game again, all the way from the beginning. Absolutely loved it, especially if there's tr if there's uh, gamers, if there's G's for gamer points for you know doing it on a higher difficulty it gives me a great excuse to do it because i love clocking up the g's people and the trophies if i'm on the playstation so that that normally i have this massive it's like a massive week of like no idea what to play don't play anything because i can't make my mind up or i start playing something don't like it put something else on boo and i was expecting that to happen again however and I didn't really have a, a buzz for anything, but I just, I know, because Aaron G must, must uh, sorry, Aaron Brew, I should say, Aaron Brew, who's my son and comes on the channel sometimes, he had got me Red Dead Redemption 2 for Christmas, and um, I kind of hinted at him to do it because it was reduced in price. I said, look, if you want to keep my Christmas cheap, just, you know, get me Red Dead 2, because it's not something I probably would have gone out and naturally bought myself at this stage in the game, because it is massive. And when I played Red Dead 1 on the PS3 for the first time, it was... I mean, I fell in love with that game, but my mindset was just... Went into Western world and I just loved it. You know, I loved being in a Western and, and that whole open thing, and I played that game right to its end. I didn't do an awful lot of the open world stuff, but I, I just loved playing through the story. I did enough of it to, you know, to sort of hunt and, and, and get horses and stuff, but I didn't really go discovering much but so when it came to this one i was waiting for that buzz to come back and it, it it never really came back which is why i suggested that he buy it for me and then i would you know i'd stick it in at some point and, and give it a whirl people and uh and that's exactly what i did last night and so i finished jedi fallen order the day before yesterday and then last night i thought i watched a couple of movies and it was still fairly early it was about eight o'clock at night or something and I thought, oh, well, I'll throw Red Dead in. I'll see what kind of buzz I get for it. And plus, I wanted to see what it looked like because the, it got so much good press, specifically on the Xbox One X. It's been the biggest show-off of the Xbox One X that there's been so far with regards to how it used the juice that is in that machine to give out the best possible performance. And it's, it's nigh on perfect at a 30 frames per second frame rate according to Digital Foundry when I watched it. There's only a couple of really heavy cutscenes where it dips a tiny weeny bit. And on all the other consoles, it, it struggles a lot more in certain, in, area, in certain areas. So I was keen to see what it looked like. I tell you what, I mean, I played... I put it in about 8 o'clock and I must have turned it off at about quarter to 12 or something. <laughs> Got proper into it. And that was just the opener. You know, like, I mean, it absolutely stunning to look at i mean what a good looking game that is and i mean i immediately fell into the world i think because i wasn't thrown into a desert like the first one does i think because you're thrown into a very snowy blizzardy section of, of america that kind of hooked me in straight away and 
it just felt like a completely different, well, not a different world, but you know what I mean? It was just a different vibe. And it immediately made me more interested because it wasn't more just tumbleweed floating around and me riding a horse and seeing goats and shiz in the background. So it kind of hooked me in straight away. And you're just looking around at the scenery as you follow them around on the little tutorial bits it takes you on. And the whole opening of the story was fantastic. The characters are great. I've still not quite got it in my head as to where this is. I, I, it seems it seems like, and I could be completely wrong, and don't go spoiling it for me, but it feels like it's set before the other one because there seems to be a, the character that we are in the first one, although I'm not remembering names very well, but I'm sure it was Marsden or something, his name, and he seems to be a very young member of that group that we're in. So... It feels at the moment like it's set before the first one. So I don't know. I'll see how it pans out. But that, the first, I basically did the entire opening section, which is all set in the snow. And you get to the first base camp and it opens up at that point to just go and do loads of whatever you want to do. And this is where it starts getting interesting because it's whether or not it can keep me focused and interested throughout the game. What I'll do at the moment is just follow the key side quest quest indicators and just keep it that way till I get my, my my ground well until I get my feet steady and then I'll one I'll maybe go off and do some hunting and stuff at some point but there's a reason to be earning cash and stuff in the game as well for the camp and all that sort of stuff so it'll be interesting to see how many different ways you can make money and yeah absolutely adoring it I can see after playing that first sort of four hours, whatever it was, I can see why in that year, was it 2018? I can see why God of War got the game of the year and they didn't. And it's nothing to do with the fact that it's bad or anything. It's just because God of War brought something unique and new to the table. And, it, you know, both in the kind of the world it went into and because it took Kratos out of where he was and into a whole new different set of gods and everything else. And whole new battle mechanics, whole new way of playing the game, open world, it kind of rediscovered itself. Red Dead Redemption 2, from what I've seen so far, has not re rediscovered anything. It is exactly the, pretty much the way that the other one played. And I found the the original one a little bit clumsy when I was trying to do, you know, things with the guns and everything else. Could be me, but, you know, other games I don't feel that clumsy with. So, and they haven't really polished any of that. It feels just the same, you know, like getting used to where everything is and the radio wheel and all that sort of stuff. So I can see why God of War won it over it. I mean, these are very small things, people. I mean, it's still great to play, but um, I, I kind of understand why God of War won it and, and Red Dead didn't because it, it's basically just a, a spectacular looking, bigger version of the original one. And that's not a bad thing. It just means that when that game came along, and if God of War hadn't come out that year, it probably would have won. But something more original came and, and, and took the, the title from it. So, you know, but my God, what a good looking game. I mean, that is probably, that, that has to be the best, so far, the best looking game I've seen at all on this gen at the moment. I mean, it, especially for, I mean, I'll yeah, okay. Maybe maybe not a, a linear one. I mean, Gears, Gears of War 4 and 5 are, um, pretty spectacular to be fair but the they're both on that console are they yeah they are but anyway the, it, it is stunning and considering that it is an open world game it looks incredible I mean it's just mind boggling as to how they make that look that good in an open world game absolutely fantastic so that if it keeps me hooked in is going to be well, the next two years of my life. Because <laughs> Aaron Brew, actually, he's played it. And it, it, it suckered him in for about 150 hours. I mean, he was in it for so long. And he, I think he did quite a lot of the sidey stuff, though, and then decided to leave it and crack into the story. To, which is what I end up doing naturally with all of these types of games anyway. I'll do a lot of the open world stuff until it starts getting a bit tedious. And then I'll pull it back in, do the story and, and get it done. And then you can always revisit these type of games anyway and go wandering around the world, can't you? So, oh yeah. So I'm, I'm really, really thankful that I just immediately got the vibe for that. I almost put Control back in because I still haven't finished it. And I still really want to finish that game because I was loving it as well. But I felt like it was kind of going from one linear game into another linear game. And it might have been a bit mad on the buttons at that point with what I was doing with Jedi. So I knew that 
Red Dead was going to be completely different with the buttons and everything, and it was going to be a slightly different experience. Absolutely adoring it. Fantastic. So, I don't know. You don't necessarily have to be a Western fan to enjoy it, but I'm, I'm you know... I pick and choose my westerns, really. I mean, you know, Young Guns and all that lot, I absolutely loved. And some of the older ones are great, you know, the spaghetti western ones. But I've never been, like, a western western fan. But those games really, really pull me into that world. There's something about living in the sort of wild west, you know. There's a little bit of me that wishes that there is a Red Dead Redemption 3, you know, many years from now, that is set when the Wild West is the Wild West, because they always seem to build these games on the cusp of when the Wild West is dying and the new world is coming in, the laws are coming in and and all that sort of stuff. I mean, there's a lot to be said for actually giving us a game that is set in the Wild Wild West when it's all like, you know, it's all raw, you know, people are still trying to find their land and find their, you know, go back to that sort of, that sort of era of it, you know, but I don't know. Maybe it's tricky ground because, I don't know. I mean, it, it it's not tricky because you've got to then, you've got to then cover how the Native Americans were treated and all that sort of stuff. And I think if any platform can show that, I mean, films have done it, but if any, if any platform can show that really well, it's probably games. You know, there's games that make you do terrible things playing in certain sections and to give you an idea of just how horrible it was that, this happened or whatever so it would be interesting to try and play in that sort of era of when those horrible decisions were being made you know maybe even play as a native american would be one way to look at it wouldn't it? <laughs> you know it'd be one way to do it but it would be nice to 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 see that done in a red dead redemption game i mean the whole the whole hunting and thing i mean that the whole hunting and and traveling the world stuff becomes even more exciting i think if you're a native american because that's what they did i mean their whole lives were built around it but anyway i ramble on people and this video is not meant to be about red redemption but i'm loving it absolutely loving it it's brilliant people i'm gonna have another sip before we get on to the xbox one x series x series x Stephen. right so there's a few things that have sort of dribbled out the wood we're gonna have a year of 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 amazing leaks and dribbles and <laughs> things dribbling out at us people through every week. Because we know, for those that don't know, you've clearly been living in a cardboard box for the last sort of four months. But we know, we know we're getting two new consoles this year. We know they're coming in holiday 2020. And if history tells us anything, then that's most likely October, November. And there's a lot of whispering about the place that people think that the Xbox is definitely going to be October. Because they want to be first out the out the blocks. And I don't think PlayStation are going to need to hold off or delay anything this time. I think they're just going to go straight for it as well. They both seem to be on the money. They both seem to be well prepared this time. Which was a different situation last time. Xbox have to put the last one behind, us, behind them. Because it didn't go well for them. We all know that. It was a terrible launch. It wasn't a great product to begin with. And they missed the boat on so many things. But they're getting all of that right this time under Phil Spencer. That Whether you like or dislike the shape of the Xbox Series X, it's kind of by the by. That system looks like it's going to be the most powerful. So what we know is, uh, for those of you that don't know what a teraflop is when I'm about to talk about it, just look at it as a power ratio, Okay. And I think when the original, well, I'm going to get my, fig- my figures wrong, but roughly about the, the, the PS4 original and the, the Xbox One original, I think the Xbox One original was like 1.1 teraflops or something, and the PS4 was like 1.5. There was a, there was a differential, which at the time was big and made a big difference, along with many other things like GDR, GDDR5 RAM in the PlayStation, but only GDDR3 in the Xbox. And all these sorts of things that made the Xbox not as good. And that's why a lot of the games that came out for the Xbox standard are still 760p. Because it wasn't capable of... Which was just madness. Absolute madness. You just had a 360 that could do 720p. I mean, it just didn't make any sense whatsoever. Other than to the buffoon that actually put it all together. That left swiftly after it all went wrong. So, 
that's the sort of teraflops we were talking about back then, which was what, 2013? So it's been, you know, by the time these come out, we'll have had, what, seven years of, of sorry, six years or, yeah, no, seven years, 2020, Stephen. So we'll have had seven years of these consoles. So we are now about to leap into teraflops world of. So, okay, so the Xbox One X, sorry, Xbox, Jesus, I'm never going to get this right. The Xbox Series X which at the moment still sounds like a group of machines or a number of machines, not a specific machine. But the one they've shown us, which they're calling Xbox Series X at this point in the game. I mean, they might, for, the, for example, that might be Xbox Series X and there'll be one called Xbox Series S, which might be lower than this. And there is rumours that they have another, another dev kit, which is slightly lower, but they're not talking about that at the minute. They're just talking about this Uber one. And the Uber one is capable of 12 teraflops, right? So that is like, I mean, what's that? That's like almost 12 times where we were before from the original launches. So that's the original ones, not the, not the PS4 Pro or the Xbox One X, just the standard ones. So there's a massive differential there. That is a beast of a machine in comparison. So the power of this thing is like, I think, did they said it's... Tw in it all all encompassed it's twice as powerful as the xbox one x which is i think six teraflops i think that's basically what the difference is so the the xbox one x is a massive leap from where the xbox one was because that was only 1.1 or something teraflops so that was already a pretty big jump and they're about to double it again into this massive powerful one the interesting thing to all of this is from and this isn't confirmed but ps5 looks like it's 9.3 or 9.5 teraflops, something like that. And so that is still, you know, 9.5 to 12 is a pretty significant leap in power. And I'm surprised at that. I think, I th well, I'm, I, I kind of am and I'm not. I know Phil Spencer absolutely wants his machine, or whatever his highest machine is, that is launched this year to be the most powerful console on the planet. That is what he wants, and I think he's going to get it, because I think they'll probably sell those at a little bit of a loss to get themselves back into being a major, major contender with Sony, because Sony won that battle hands down last time. And he wants to pull those people back in that he lost, or the Xbox lost, when they got it all wrong the first time. And I, I, abs I don't see Sony pushing out suddenly deciding that they're going to change theirs from 9.5 to 12 because i think sony want to continue what they've been doing they want to launch a product that's at the 399.99 dollars mark which in this country probably relates to about 330 pounds in this country which is exactly what they did with the ps4 i think the ps4 pro might have been more than that i can't remember but the, with the launch product and i think what will happen is and i've seen a few other people thinking it as well the I think that Microsoft are going to launch two consoles. They're not going to launch one. And I think that they'll have the beast of the machine, which will probably come out at $499.99 or whatever it is, dollars. And you'll have the one that's the 9.5 that matches the PlayStation one at $399.99. I think that will be what Microsoft do. And I think it's genius. I think, like, why keep doing what you've been doing every year when you can launch... Laptop companies don't launch, here's an amazing laptop at three gazillion pounds. They say, hang on, here's a series of laptops. And they all do the same job, but they'll, some of them will do it better than others. Why not do that with consoles straight off the bat? There's no reason why not to. You know, there's a, I mean, with phones it's usually size, you know, but there's a 7 and a 7XL or whatever they're called, isn't there? But... Absolutely no reason why you can't do that with console at all. Like, don't limit us. We know now that the devs are capable of building in the the dynamic ability of games to say, well, if there's more power there, use it. And if there's not, use, you know, just stay where you are. It's been doing it with the X and the and the Xbox standard. It's been doing it with the Pro and the, the PS4 standard. Or they patch the games in order to do it as they go. Games companies would rather have the ability to pull more juice if they can find more juice. So I think it's brilliant. Not to mention the, out, the outer, you know, when you're not using it as a gaming console, it's quicker at doing everything else, moving around the menus and everything else. The Xbox One X has got 12 gigabyte of RAM, whereas 
the standard only had eight and the PS4 Pro still only has eight. And you can see the difference when you're using the X, when you're bouncing around all the menus and stuff. There's no delay at all, even when you've got a game running. And it's just, honestly, that that I, I fell in love with the Xbox One X. I started this gen as a PS4 man, and I've ended up as an Xbox man, simply because I love that console so much. And it isn't, it isn't just about the power, it's about the design, it's about how quiet it is, it's been thought through... You know, I still feel with the PlayStation, it was like, how can we fit this into the tiniest box, but just shove more fans into it? <laughs> like, whereas the Xbox One X, well, even the Xbox, the original Xbox was super quiet as well. They put it in a larger, larger case and they gave it loads of breathing room. But the Xbox One X is quiet because it's got liquid cooling in it. It's heavy as well. It's a really heavy machine, but that, that doesn't matter. But it's a beautiful machine. It reminds me of the PS2, original PS2, but sort of a flat, a flat, with a flat surface so i was surprised well i was so oh yeah i was i was quite surprised when i saw the xbox series x but i think they definitely wanted to get away and make it look like it was something completely different i think they want to show it off as a console tower pc you know that sort of vibe and i think that's what they're trying to push into people's heads like this is a powerful beast now it's like a it's like a tower pc and you're going to get uber you know, u uber performance out of this thing. And I think that's kind of why they went with that look, along with it obviously being the design of of giving it breathing space and, and vents. Interestingly, there's no vents at the back of it when we saw the, the rear of it. And we saw that. I'll talk about the back of it in a minute, actually, because I've got a list, because we, we got a view of the back of it because they were promoting something at CES that was completely... Something to do with the graphics card, I think, that's in it or something. And they happen to show off the rear of the machine. Now, it's not confirmed that this is a genuine, this is how it will look at the back uh, deal, because it was just kind of shown in this image. And it could have just been that they had to put something on the back of it to to give us an idea that there was something at the back of it. So I mean, I'm still holding my beer, people. We all like long, quiet pauses while well, I say nothing, don't we? <laughs> That's so good. Right. So, we saw the back of this machine, and if the photograph is correct, I'm going to try and do this without my glasses, people. This beard, what I'm going for, right? I'm going to go off topics slightly. Take the hat off, right? So... If I keep going, I'm going to end up like Triple H, basically. <laughs> We're at Stone Cold territory at the minute. But if I keep going, I'll have the new Triple H look, where he's just got this V-shaped beard. <laughs> no hair. <laughs> That's what we're going for, Peter. There you go, eh? I know all of you were wondering what was under there. <laughs> Is it level? Right, moving on. I'm fascinated with this beard, but I'm going to talk about it every week. You, you will only come back here so you can hear about my beard. Right, so we have on the rear of this, uh, according to the picture that we've seen, we have a one times HDMI. We have, I'll try and put a picture up behind me, one times HDMI. We have an optical audio, which is great because I use that currently. Oh, I... Actually, I don't because I'm doing my optical out through my TV. So it doesn't matter which console I've got on, the optical comes through the TV and... I, you know, doesn't matter which one. Anyway, optical out on the on the back for your sound. Super speed internet connection, two times USB-A. The power connection is in there, and there seems to be an extra port for devs to do some debugging and stuff with, which isn't confirmed, but it seems to be an extra weird port back there that they seem to think that's what it was for. And that's it. There's another USB-A at the front of it, so you've got three USBs in total, one at the front, two at the back. So there's no great surprises. The The power connection does look like the power supply is back inside the machine again. So it doesn't, because it's it looks like one of those small power connectors like the PS, well, the PlayStations have always had it. The Xbox One, um, yes, the Xbox One original had a brick. The Xbox One X has the tiny power and, and the PSU is inside the, 
the machine itself. So there's no big brick. It's just a plug going into the wall. So it looks like from the connection we're seeing there that it's it's that deal again because the best thing they ever did was get rid of that bloody brick. I mean, nobody wants that kicking around the place. I don't know why it took them so long to do that, to be honest. And it was probably because of heat. They probably because it does build up a, hot, a lot of heat. The 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 power the PSU has to have a fan of its own. Blah blah blah. But you know, Sony have managed it for years. And to be fair to Sony, like the only machine that I can remember being loud are these ones. Like the previous ones have always been pretty quiet. The PS3 was dead quiet. So you know, it's going to be really interesting. So there we are. So that that was that was more leaked info this week, or well, not leaked, but. So it came out of that image, if you will, and we don't know if that's fact or fiction or whether it was just sort of put there to make it look like there was something there. But it does, you know, it makes sense. I mean, it seems to be the same ports that are on the back of the Xbox One X, and I don't see much changing there. Uh, Super Speed Broadband, I think that's on the X. I tell you, an interesting one for me is when I put Red Dead Redemption in, it's the only game I've ever seen that requires two Blu-rays to install it. It was 102 meg, something like that, 102 megabyte of, of sorry, 102 gigabyte, I should say, 102 gigabyte of, of, of game to be installed. It requires two, it has two discs in the, in the box. I've never seen another game that needed to, but if we're going to go into bigger and bigger games next time for more power, then what's happening with the, because I heard a while back that Sony were working on a, blu-ray disc that was capable of holding it could still use standard blu-rays but was capable of holding like a gazillion more in the way of gigabytes now if sony pull that off then brilliant has that already happened and i've missed the boat there somewhere and, and, and are these machines going to have it because it, we are still going to get a physical drive and you know the world is nowhere near ready to go fully digital yet so I'm interested to know what they're going to do with these drives because for me, there has to be a drive that's capable of, otherwise every game that comes out for these things is going to have two discs because it won't be able to hold the size of the game or it'll have one disc and you have to download about 50 gig extra from the cloud or whatever, which is one way of doing it. But you want to be able to play your game straight from a disc if you've not got internet connection you know if you buy one and you throw one in it should just work shouldn't it you shouldn't have to go online for it but it's that's my interest that's one of my big question marks is what is that what is that optical drive and we already have a ps3 that had a blu-ray player ps4 and ps4 pro both had a blu-ray player the same thing pretty much and the 360 had CDs, so that had quite a few games that had dual discs. Uh, sorry, DVDs, I should say, DVDs. And the Xbox One came with the Blu-ray player, and the Xbox One X has a Blu-ray player. So we've kind of done the Blu-ray player as it stands at the minute. And this leap, this is two leaps of console now, and we had Blu-rays two leaps ago. So for me, I'd like to see something that's capable of dealing with a disc that can take a blu-ray disc that can take more data um and i i'm sure it was about a year or so ago i heard a story that sony were working on a new version of that now if they haven't if they haven't announced that in general terms yet maybe they could announce it with i mean if they announce that with the ps4 and it's not available on the, the xbox that'd be some that'd be something wouldn't it and they they have said there was an interview with the CEO of, of PlayStation, uh, the new CEO, he's just taken over, isn't he? and he said, like he said, we haven't released quite a few of the bits that are brand new that nobody knows about on the PS5 yet, we're holding, we're holding it back until we're ready. So it's going to be dead interesting, because he seemed pretty stoked about these extra features that he hasn't announced yet and that could well be one of them like that ps5 could come out with a brand new type of blu-ray player that we haven't seen yet that's capable of holding you know i mean i did the the last one didn't play 4k yeah it didn't because i remember that because i think the xbox one x one can play a blu-ray disc that's 4k maybe but yeah i think it can but the, the the ps4 pro doesn't it still only plays 1080p so it could be that you at least get that differential but it would be something if they gave us a disc 
a disc player that's capable of taking because di- then all of their games will be back onto one disc again, which is a, a massive boon for everybody. But that being the case, if it's like late in the day, it's certainly not going to be on the Xbox One X, is it? Anyway, if you all know something, I don't. If that if there already is a new Blu-ray player coming and I've missed the boat on that one, let me know. But I haven't seen anything about it other than I heard Sony were were developing something. So it's going to be interesting to see. I'm not sure that. I'm not sure that PlayStation 4 players are going to start buying Xbox Series Xs just because it's got 12 teraflops and theirs is a 9.5 because I still think that there's going to be another Xbox that's got 9.5 teraflops and it's the same price. So I don't see PS4 or PlayStation... Well, not fa- I was going to use the word fanboys, but I don't mean that. Like, I don't think hardcore PlayStation people or Sony people are going to suddenly jump ship just because there's a 12 teraflop Xbox One X because it is all about the games in the end to some degree. Uh, but I think what they might get back are the people that they lost to PlayStation because there was a lot of people that loved Xbox to bits and then they cocked it all up and they just shifted over because it wasn't it wasn't great. And I think those people could well go back. I think it's certainly going to be a more balanced a more balanced market next time, without any doubt. I'm really looking forward to it. Let me know in the comments below what you're going for. You go, So let me ask you several things here. So if there is three options, say, are you going for the PS4, uh, PS5? Are you going for the Xbox Series X Uber? Or would you go for an Xbox Series S, say, that is the same as the, the PlayStations and, and go to Xbox that way? So let me know in the comments below what your mindset is at the minute. Obviously, I'm in a nice place because, you know, I don't have anyone telling me I can't buy both. <laughs> and the channel gives me an excuse to have both anyway. I think, I've mentioned this before, but I think the best thing I did for the channel in a long time was start showing my games on the X, Xbox Series, uh, Xbox One X, because there was just the, the whole of, of YouTube was saturated with people playing PS4, PS4 Pro because they'd won so much of the battle. And when the X came along, people just didn't naturally shift to play X and, and start showing them on YouTube. So I think it did give me a lot of people will see in my videos because they specifically wanted to see what it looked like on the most powerful machine in the universe, people. <laughs> It's the most powerful console in the whole universe. So, yeah, I, I'm going to be really interested to see, you know, where the flow of customers go. I think definitely the UK and American markets will shift quite dramatically this time. So far as I still think because of the success of the PS4 and if the PS5 is fully backward compatible, I can't see all those PS4 players suddenly shift into Xbox because then they've got PS4 games all to waste. So it's going to be a hard task for Xbox to get them back, but I think they're absolutely doing everything right and, and everything they possibly can do to get people back into their into their world. And the big thing that is going to pull people back will be the games. And they've bought up all of those developers over the last year and before that but certainly a lot in the last year who are all starting to build these new ips and new games that they're looking for and that that all takes time but i you know they're launching the product with halo 6 master chief is going to be the core of that game again because of the bit of a cock up with five and not sticking with master chief so much which people didn't like and they've obviously carrying that they're going to carry on the Gears franchise into that. So they've got those two core games to go in with. But to add these new IPs, Fable is ab- Fable Four is absolutely going to drop onto that machine pretty swiftly. I don't think it will be long after that launches. I think maybe within a year after or something, maybe two at most. And you know they they've got ah uh, they bought RPG companies Obsidian was it they bought you know Sunua Sacrifice folk. And Snow Sacrifice was actually shown off on it. So they're building all of the, the, the groundwork well, that have been over the last two years now, or after since Phil Spencer came in. He sorted the hardware out, did back compat, did the you know, and they're already promising that all of their stuff is gonna work on that machine. Everything that works now on your Xbox One X or your Xbox One will work on the new one, including all of your kit, all of the controllers and stuff. 
and they're making it their, you know, they want people to be able to take everything forward. PlayStation are being slightly more vague about that. They're still not confirming that everything you have on your PS4 is going to work on your PS5. That is going to be a big deal because if they don't make that happen, they will lose a lot of those people that moved from Xbox to PlayStation back to Xbox because that is a giant reason to move back. If you're buying a new console and the one you have doesn't do backward compatibility, then you've got every reason to, to move the other way. So PlayStation need to sort that out. And there's no reason, they, they cannot come out and say they're all available on PlayStation now. I mean, that's just daft. Like it has to be, it has to be that you can put your disc in, a the PS4 disc in a PS5 and make it work. Otherwise, they've got a massive problem. So, and then I was hearing that, uh, I can't remember where the rumor came from, but they were talking about having this sort of, like they did with the PS3, it's like having two a second computer inside the thing that pretends to be a PS4. And it's like, don't do that. <laughs> Build your bloody products. I mean, you don't have to... If you're a PC gamer and, and something new comes out that needs... You just put new hardware in it. You don't need, like... You don't need to have another computer inside your computer to play the last computer's games. It's like, sort it out, Sony. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know that people want to take the games with them. It can't be that hard. If if, play, if if PCs can do it, it can't be that hard to make these machines do it. They are, after all, just PCs. Like, they've got bespoke stuff in them, but still, you know. The PS4 was the first PlayStation that wasn't bes that bespoke. It was using industry standard stuff in its main part, which is why it was so popular with the devs and everybody else, and why it became such a big deal. It was the easiest thing to work with. Xbox One became the opposite of that, ironically, after the 360 being brilliant to work with. Anyway, so, yeah, they, they have to get the backward compatibility right, Sony. On the other hand, there, there has been whispers that it might do all the backward compatibility. There was patents seen for the PS5 doing full back compatibility. If you could put PS1, PS2 games in there, that'd be just incredible, wouldn't it? But that that's a big ask. I don't know how that would work. Maybe this thing with the second computer inside the computer has nothing to do with PS4 games. So, like, a PS4 game would just use the, the same hardware. But if they're going to give us PS3 and PS2 and PS1 support, maybe there's a little thing in there that helps deal with that. Now, that would be brilliant, uh, because that's a perfect way to deal with that situation, because those games, those games do run on a completely different sort of... Uh, architecture type stuff because it was all bespoke back then so that would be brilliant if they could do that because I've still got a PS2 collection have I got a PS1 game? I thought I had one but I don't I think it's just PS2s I've got but that would be brilliant I mean that would be a big selling point as well so there you are but let me know in the comments below about all of these things I've been talking about I am super excited about this year I really am I'm being very stingy about what I'm I mean I haven't bought a game Fallen Order was the last thing I bought uh, Red Dead Redemption was a gift so I'm being very stingy about what I'm buying because all of my pennies at the moment are going to get clocked up to the big hole I mean I've got savings and stuff but I, I want to know that I can buy those two consoles and not even blink an eye you know so that's basically what my my, my whole year is going to be thinking about those massive purchases are coming at the end of the year I'm going to get both of them at launch We'll see what titles are coming with them. Must I, I guess I I know I can get Halo, so Halo Six is a given, I suppose, and possibly Sunua Sacrifice Two, whatever it's called, Sunua Saga, was it called? But we'll see. We'll we'll know more about what games are getting launched near the time. I think there'll be a bigger jump in the performance of games. I think there's always this sort of grey area when you get the new consoles, <clears throat> the games that are specifically for the new ones, kind of look. You, you, initially you think oh it looks amazing but it's not as big a jump really it wasn't last time it didn't feel like as uber a jump as you anticipated i think it'll be different this time to some degree because devs are kind of aware of of things a lot more in advance and they've had the dev kits a lot longer i think than normal but it's going to be very interesting plus they're already designing games now because they know there's going to be different versions of these 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 consoles so they want the games designed so they can suck more power out if they need them all these sorts of things you know I, but i think you know i think this is going to be a i think this is probably a relative jump that we'll see here from the kind of jump that we saw from ps2 to ps3 or xbox 
standard to Xbox 360 because that was like whoa you know and I th- I think I feel from those specs that we're seeing now I think we're going to get that same vibe from these new new consoles because they sound amazing uh, and the power jump is fantastic we're on the cusp of greatness people I feel you know it's exciting times exciting times let me know what you think well there you are I've managed to blab on for 45 minutes ish did I have anything else to talk about? Well, I suppose, yeah, the only other thing was that this has been an interesting, this has been an interesting gen because it's the opposite that happened with me last gen. Last gen, I was all about 360. This was when Aaron, Aaron Brew was still a, a young lad. Uh, well, he's still a young lad, but, <laughs> you know, he's a grown man, young lad now. But uh, back then, it because I'd moved down here, he was up, in Edinburgh with his mum it was just the most beautiful thing to be able to go on the Xbox 360 stick the headphones on and chat to him all night playing a game I mean it was like the the sweetest way to 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 spend a lot of time with him and have something really interesting to do that we could both you know chat about have fun with rather than just a phone call so it was just it was heaven but you know, as years went on and he grew up and what have you, uh, he, those sort of we didn't spend that time gaming as much as we did in the earlier days. And then later on, I got a lot more into gaming than I I was at that point. So far as it kind of became, I don't know. I, I it, yeah, back in the day, it was kind of football, you know, Gears of War, Lord of the Rings games on the PS2, that sort of stuff. It was kind of like I played it. And I got into it. There was like Code Veronica X, all these sort of things. But I wasn't, I wasn't like a mad gamer. I just loved having the ability to play games on these consoles. And it was really having Aaron that that made it become an exciting thing. When he was like six, seven, eight, and the N sixty four came in, and you know Zelda, all that sort of stuff. And that's where the love began. But during the three sixty phase, I started playing games, types of games I hadn't played before, RPGs, that sort of stuff. Anyway, long story short, I. I I ended up shifting from 360 over to PS3 because I it was my I'm what 40 I can't forget my age I'm 49 this year so I'm 48 at the minute and on my I got a PlayStation 3 from a 40th and when I got that it was almost like I just wanted to like another world to play in because I'd kind of done as much as I felt like I was doing on 360 I felt like the PS3 was kind of on this uplift as well and. I got it and I, oh, it's the PS3 Slim that I got. It wasn't, you know, when it was launched, it was well after the event. And when that, when I got that machine, this whole other world of games opened up to me. And I completely shifted from 360 to PS3 and, and the, 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 the 360 became redundant. And the exact opposite has happened in this gen. I started with the PS4 and the Xbox One, but all of my primary gaming was done on the PS4. And the PS4 Pro came out, got the Pro, dumped the 4 stuck with that and then the xbox one x came out phil went you know well phil spencer came in started changing all these things i was kept watching what they were doing and when the xbox one x came out i was like i'm having that That that's like sweet as anything and that's it like from the minute i got that what two years ago i've just i've I've just fell in love with it so much that i can't even you know it takes all of my effort to go back onto the playstation i just adore that machine and they've also sorted out the menu as well the menu is so much better now on the the xbox they've cleaned it right up you're not bombarded the minute you go onto the screen now and there's still some advertising i could do without but in the main part it's bob on really nice I, could, I wouldn't mind a feature because at the moment like you get it comes up and it's got like a big square here which is the last thing that you opened up and then lots of little squares with I think five or six previous ones so you've got all the quick links to the things you've been doing most recently and at the moment it fills some of those slots with like I went on the store and then suddenly you've got a store symbol here or I put a blu-ray disc in you've got a blu-ray disc there it's like I don't I don't need those on my quick because I never need to touch them anyway (laughs) it's like I don't need them on my quick menu like I just want the games on my quick menu. So it'd be nice to have some sort of filter that allows you to just have games on that quick menu. So I hope we get that little option at some point. I'm, I'm expect, I could be wrong, but I'm expecting the way that Microsoft work now with their operating systems. I'd be very surprised if there is a completely different menu system for the series X. Uh, But you never know. 
You never know. Because they seem to have been... I mean, that change only came pre-Christmas, so they're still making fairly big changes to what is the st- the Xbox at the moment sort of menu system and stuff. So it'd be interesting to see if they do a completely new menu for it. But they, they as, as a, a Microsoft as a company, tend to want to have, like, Windows 10 is what it is and it is what it is on everything, you know, like a tablet or a blower or whatever. And I feel like that's what they will do with their operating system. So it may be that it does change, but I think it will change on both this current model that we have and on that one like that the thing will go across both so there you are anyway that is my thoughts on it all people it's all very exciting it's just such an exciting year for gaming i'm really stoked and and you've got to remember like playstation have still got ghost of tsushima and the last of us part two and you know to come out yet and there's another one that i'm forgetting but they've got massive titles to come out on the ps4 (laughs) before we even get to the new consoles coming out so it's just i mean it's mega exciting times people it really is this is it's going to be a fantastic year in gaming we're going to have without any doubt in my mind we are going to have two cracking consoles to choose from and if they do what i think they're going to do microsoft you'll have three cracking consoles to choose from and you know it's just fantastic i mean we could not be in as gamers we could not be in a better position this year Everything is just looking up for us. Very, very exciting times. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you in this vlog of mine today. And I shall see you all in the next one, folks. Take it easy. Bye.